One of the most common uses of the project to surface constraint is the case where we have an overlay over an existing pavement section. In this case, we have a new overlay PGL, which is raised some distance above the uh, existing pavement layer. And what we ultimately want here is a new pavement component that uh, follows the new PGL at the, at the defined cross slopes. And the bottom of the component, though, goes down and intersects the existing surface and follows along the surface so that we can get a good volume of the new overlay material there. So as we walk along the roadway designer here, we'll see that this component um, stays at the constant depth along all the template drops instead of following uh, the existing ground uh, demonstrating where our overlay is. So to demonstrate this, we will uh, edit the template in the IRD file. And to make the bottom of our component follow that existing ground, what we'll do is we'll right click on each of these points and choose edit point. And we will change this vertical constraint to a project to surface constraint. We will tell it to find any direction, go up or down. It will stay at this horizontal offset off of the left edge of pavement. And it'll go in any direction seeking this surface, the Highway 12 topo surface. I'll hit apply on that, and I'll go and change the next one. Now when I select OK and start processing through my stations, I'll see that now the bottom of the component is following along the existing ground of the surface. If I right click and hit Edit Station, I can see that my left edge of pavement, center line, and right edge of pavement points at the bottom of the component are projecting down to the surface. And in this view here, we can't see the component following the surface. But if we look in the designer view, we see that the bottom of the component is following the surface. And when we generate our DTM, we will see that there will be a transverse feature along the bottom of this component at every station that follows the surface.